setting early. Asprey and Lee looking to initiate that offense. Great downfield cut early by Rosenthal. Pressured by the Japanese defense. Stall count's getting high. And we see a stall signal given. So just a reminder for those watching at home, uh, as a self-officiated sport, players in possession of the disc have only 10 seconds to complete their throw. Otherwise, it generates an automatic turnover. So this is a great opportunity here for Japan. Working quickly to recenter the disc. Miura finds Kawaguchi, but not able to keep hands. It goes back to Australia. Inside the red zone now. Lee acting as the traffic director. A great wide cut from number 99 for Australia, Wong Rechu. But as they try and close, there's another turnover. Japan with a great opportunity. Wide shot. Australia on the doorstep now, hoping to close out this first point of the game with an offensive hold. These teams have traveled quite a way to get here. It's gonna take them a little while to adapt to the conditions and, and make sure that their warm up has worked, but there it is. Lee puts the shot out across, finding Catherine Buxer for a great first score for the Australian side. We go 1-0 Australia. Some amazing pressure by the Japanese defensive side there, generating a number of turns, able to slow down the Australian offense. The wind starting to pick up now. Still quite inconsistent, there's no dominant direction, so teams are going to have to learn to adapt quickly as they come to terms with what the conditions are providing them and what opportunities they're being given on the field. But we'll see Australia send out their seven defenders to start off the pull and kick off the second point of the game. In our Trans-Tasman series between Australia and Japan, uh, New Zealand will take the field a little bit later on. A great pull there by Paige Mackay. Some very, very quick disc movement by the Japanese side. Oguro Tanasu. Shimizu pins down on the sideline, able to work back to the center field. Beautiful forehand to work the width of the field, just outside the red zone. An opportunity to chase on, but it's just slightly overthrown. Great vision by Nida. And so, position goes to Australia. A full field ahead of them to work through. Mackay to pick up the disc, supported by Eilish Warnock in the down in the upfield space. Coming out in a vertical stack, trying to create as much width uh, and as much space to use on either side of the field. A great initial cut from the end of the stack. Thrown a little bit high. It's a bit of a hospital pass. Great defensive pressure, great awareness there for Japan to secure a turn. But a pick has been called, so 
a reminder that as a self-officiated sport, players take it upon themselves to learn the rules and, and make calls on the field. As a non-contact sport, if a player's motion to pursue their uh, opposing player on defense uh, is impeded by the movement or positioning of another player, that constitutes a pick. Play is stopped, uh, as signaled by the big biceps that you just saw there, and then uh, the defensive player is given the opportunity to catch up to where they reasonably would have been had the pick not occurred. And so the disc is going to come back in. Great fakes there. And one of those classic catch your D's movement moments. Warnock being able to get a touch on the disc, but still end up in the hands of Japan. However, there is a saying in Ultimate, the disc doesn't lie. Uh, the following throw generates a turnover. Japan back on defense now. Great far side forehand there. Caitlin Lewis tries to reset to Warnock. It doesn't come away. Another slightly overthrown disc. Shimizu puts a beautiful forehand across field. And it's just, <laughs> despite impressive, impressive foot speed by Hirase, not able to get the score there. So we're back on defense. Gunbare Japan. You can do it. Oh, beautiful interception there. Great defensive awareness by Ogura. Trying to signal something to happen in the downfield spaces. We're just on the edge of the zone, hoping to tie the game back up. Nice, comfortable backhand. Overthrown again, an opportunity, but it is brought down. Beautiful work. Missed the first opportunity, but having that awareness and that presence of mind to just secure the grab right at the end. I believe that was Ogura who closed that one out again. So that's bookends there. Getting the defensive uh, break opportunity for Japan and then able to secure out the point with a score as we go 1-1. Great first points for this game. And so we are back on serve. The action is electric. The energy on display by these young women is absolutely fantastic. Could not be more privileged to be here in this environment watching uh, just some fantastic ultimate being displayed. Some really great pressure. We're seeing some amazing disc movement by the Japanese side. Really uh, clinical, very, very precise. Um, Australia perhaps a little bit more aggressive on the disc, but it's able to sort of work in their favor. They've, they've got the height and the reach and they're able to, to really pressure some of those high discs. Um, but it's still anybody's game. We're still early days, only one point each at the moment. And so the uh, seven Japanese players taking the side, supported by their coach. The entire Australian side taking the line to uh, support the seven who will be playing this next point, making sure that everyone is on the same page. As I am often heard saying, there are three lines that win ultimate. The offensive line, the defensive line, and the sideline. Communication is vitally important in a game like this, particularly um, as players can quite often get a bit of tunnel vision uh, when they're on the field. When you've got the disc and you're being pressured by a really aggressive defender, it can be very easy for your focus to narrow. And so it's vital to have a well-informed sideline available to be feeding you information uh, and make sure that you're making the best decision for the team. A beautiful pull, fading a little bit to the high, uh, to the, the far sideline there, but touches down inbounds. We're seeing again a match defense on display uh, from the Japanese side. Players scrambling to pick up their players. Great pressure from the defense despite an impressive bid by Wagrachu. Not able to keep it in hands. Japan with an opportunity here. Sugimoto not able to get away the reset. And 
it's so. We go back. Disc in the hands of Japan. Great thread through on a beautifully clean undercut by Yoshida. Pressured working the near sideline. Back to Sugimoto, puts up a big throw. Wong Chu is able to block it. But at what cost? A great display of spirit there. Just a reminder that if you like what you see, maybe not that particular part, but the, the production of the Ultimate, they were able to bring you some great spirit on display there. Uh, head on over to patreon.com slash altytv. Um, give us your spare change. We love it. We love bringing you events like this. Uh, so an injury called as Wongrichu takes a sub, despite an amazing defensive presence on the field to shut down a full effort uh, backhand uh, huck by Sugimoto. Should be replaced by Lee. And so the disc is live. Australia to take possession. Some great hustle by the Australian offenders. Bucks is going deep. She wants the second one. She's underneath it. Brings it down. Beautiful score. Catherine Buxer, two for two attempts in the end zone after a quick break. The impressive sacrifice by Neon Wongrichu. A great defensive play. Working hard for their team. Able to generate that turn. Great work by Buxer. Second score of the game. Absolutely fantastic to see. So we are off to an electric start in the first game of our Trans-Tasman series. Here on the field at the moment, we have the under-20 Japanese women's side and the under-20 Australian women's side. Uh, an option as well, uh, if you've got a few dollars burning a hole in your pocket, please buy a virtual ticket uh, to our event. The link will be available in the description. Um, some fantastic defensive pressure on display here by the Australian side, some great full body sacrifice defense. Uh, absolutely fantastic to see. Huge display of spirit from both sides. Uh, really, really clean game so far. Still on uh, serve at the moment. Or uh, actually, no, I believe that was an Australian break, uh, which is a huge opportunity for them to go up by one. The wind not playing particularly to any one player's favor just yet but things might change the drizzle seems to have dried up which is great beautiful long pull as it fades towards the far sideline by Makai again one of the defensive stalwarts of the Australian side some great give and go plays there huge amount of momentum as Shimizu and Nasu work up that far sideline but maybe a little bit a little bit too quick on the pace. Great take there by Mackay. Looking for downfield. Able to work that reset on the far sideline. 
not able to get off the off the forehand. And so a huge opportunity for Japan again. There it is, the big backhand. Comfortably reeled in by Nasu. Nasu Kasumi with the score as Japan go 2-2. Two, two, bringing it back on serve. Some fantastic, uh, fantastic play by both sides. Great patience for the Japanese side. That slight correction to that tempo. They had that quick break early. Um, managing to chain together a couple of passes up the far sideline. And when that didn't work, they were able to calm down, recenter, and have that ex exhibit that perfect composure to play that far sideline for a great score as we go 2-2. Two, two. The focus that we're seeing on display from the Japanese side, seven players on the line, getting a couple of words from their coach just before they prepare to pull for what's going to be the fifth point of the game. Still 2-0, anybody's game. The wind picking up predominantly from the left-hand side of your screen, moving towards the right. And so this is an, a, a, a great opportunity here for Australia to work with the wind. Having the disc at your, uh, the wind at your back when you throw the disc adds a little bit of length. It means if Japan are able to generate a turn, they've got a little bit harder work to work all the way back up the field and generate a score. But we see the signal for readiness. Oh, a beautiful pull, goes high, goes long. It's gonna touch down just outside the Australian defensive end zone. Evelyn Ha, hoping to get support from Megan Lee. Has to work up sideline. Bucks is not able to get a hand to it. Shimizu to initiate the offense for Japan. So close to a beautiful score. Those cuts pressured by Ha. Nice fading backhand. Able to come in, but a stall has been called. So again, players having 10 seconds on the disc. Ha are playing a huge amount of pressure, trying to stop Shibizu getting rid of the disc. Despite some great cuts on display by Japan, too much pressure on that defense. They had to be looked off. That last minute backhand uh, was, was a bit of a Hail Mary attempt and it was secured, but it wasn't released before that 10 second stall count was uttered. That's the conversation being had on the field at the moment. And so we're just waiting for players to resolve. Okay, so it looks like that stall count has been retracted. So that's the signal that we saw there from Megan Lee. So a tap on the head to signal that it was a stall. The wave of the arms, it was retracted. And then the arms upright, signaling a great score there. Just in the nick of time for Japan. A beautiful backhand, reaching well outside the field, having just enough edge in the wind to curve back inbounds for a great score as we go 3-2, Japan up over Australia. And so it looks like a, a timeout might have been called. So this is the first time that we see the Japanese side uh, all huddling out. Um, the seven players intended to uh, to work the next point for Australia have already taken the field, but the rest of the team, as we've seen throughout the game, have gathered up around them, make sure that everyone is on the same page, make sure that everyone is communicating clearly.
and we are back into it. This is exactly the kind of game we were hoping to see to kick off our Trans-Tasman series. Hotly contested, every disc being chased down. It's nothing that is being left behind. Everything is being put out here on the field. And we're gonna see these teams play again later on in the to in the um, over the next couple of days, which is fantastic. We'll also see the matchup against the under-20 women's New Zealand side, Kahu. But first, after a great upwind break, despite a stall count, Japan initiate with the pull. Great amount of roll on that. We see Megan Lee, Georgia Ashbury. As Japan come down with a zone look. So rather than trying to force um, those individual matchups, they've come down, they've taken away space, recognizing Australia are now having to work upwind. And that pressure was just enough to generate that turn. Wiffle tries to work the far sideline. It's not able to do it. We see Japan immediately set up that zone again. Eguchi covering the deep space, making sure no long throws come off. Abe Kobayashi trying to cover the disc at the moment. Megan Lee manages to work the far sideline. Little bit of edge on that disc. But Hatha is able to secure that one. Possession going back to Japan, right inside the red zone. A downwind break after a nice upwind point. It's exactly what they're hoping for as they want to go for two. And there it is. Great, beautiful cut. Goto straight across the front of the end zone, secures it inside the cones as we go for two. Japan up over Australia. Team spending the first couple of points trading. Japan with a bit of an early lead, 4-2 now. Australia need to, to just dial a few things in. They've, uh, they've worked well against Japan's match defense so far. As soon as Japan throws down something a little different, it's gonna take Australian side a little bit of time to adjust to that, but we'll see how they're able to improve. They've got the downwind opportunity now, so that zone isn't going to benefit them to the same extent. Uh, with the wind in Australia's back, it's going to be really, really easy for them to send longer shots downfield. Well, the wind is starting to uh, stabilize a little bit. So with those long shots in option and some really solid receivers on that Australian side, we've already seen Buxa pull down two points by herself. That zone look might not be as effective. So we'll see how uh, Japan adapt to those conditions, whether or not they recognize... Um, what the best sort of defensive strategy is going to be going forward. We see the signal for readiness from the Australian side. Japan displaying the disc. And there's the pull with that upwind. Touches down a little bit outside of half. We see Japan go back to the match defense. Although we've got players covering that extra deep space. So those handlers under not as much pressure as before. But they managed to generate the turn anyway. The disc goes a little bit high. Gerasi is able to pull that one down despite the wind. A lot of agility on display here by the Japanese side as they weave in and out of the Australian players. Nasa with the disc, far sideline. Touches just outside of Sugimoto's hands, not able to secure that disc. Australia right in the red zone here 
Paige Mackay. Puts one up. A little bit too much fade, despite an impressive bid from Trinity Doan to keep that one in hand. But a huge opportunity for Australia here as the disc will come in at the front cone of the end zone for Japan, who set up in a vertical stack again, trying to use two channels down either side of the field. Hirase again with the disc in center field. A little bit of a conversation as to whether or not the disc was up or down. So despite a great bid by the Australian defense to try and secure that, one of the Japanese players, I think Sugimoto again, was able to get a hand to it, but it touched turf before she stopped, uh, stopped rotation and had complete control. Kai found Childs right on the doorstep, not able to secure that one. Sawayama threads one through near sideline. Nasu has the disc near sideline. Makai's not able to get in front of that one. Yoshida looking in the deep space. Heavily pressured, but able to work back and find Hirase in the midfield. Nasu again, big fake, goes a little high, but it's chased down. Sugimoto has the disc. Great fake to shift the defense, puts a high shot up, but it is blocked. Great work by uh, Suchi Wu for Australia. Fantastic work to get up and underneath that disc. And shut that one down. Warnock has the disc, finds Childs again. There's a great channel opening up on the far sideline, or near sideline. Has to work short instead. Finding Doan again. Working the downfield space. Mackay maybe cuts a little early. Doan tries to put one up over the top to Warnock. A little bit too much edge. Japan comes down with it. Sawayama. Hirase. Sugimoto. Trying to fake off those cuts. Nasu just outside the hands. A little bit of miscommunication there. You can see the disc didn't come off the hand as cleanly as Sugimoto would have liked. Not able to secure it. And there's Warnock. Puts up a big floaty uh, forehand. I think Sawayama might have had an opportunity to touch on that one. She'll bring the disc on the near sideline. Marked by the aggressive Warnock. Laser beam. Hirase puts one long. Brought down just outside of the end zone. And that is Yoshida for the score, assisted by Minon Kobayashi. Some great work for Japan to go 5-2. The rest of the team rushing the field. Great excitement, great work by the Japanese side, working incredibly patiently, able to find those little opportunities to work back and forth across the field, open up those holes, that channel on the near sideline, able to put up that beautiful backhand, touching down just outside the red zone. The rest of the players, heads switched on, they're able to move into position, close out that score as Japan go up by three. An electric start to the first game in our Trans-Tasman series. Some fantastic ultimate on display. Originally, the game started both teams trading. Japan have started to walk away with it. They've got a three-point lead. They've played incredibly well. Um, previously, when we saw them playing defense on a downward point from their perspective, with the wind going from the left-hand side of your screen to your right, we saw them throw down a zone defense to really pressure that Australian side, and it worked incredibly well for them. Are we going to see that same defensive strategy again? 
By the same token, both teams very competitive in terms of their match defense. We haven't seen a lot of players absolutely break away from their defender. We haven't seen any huge mismatches that teams have been able to capitalize on. So you can either do it better, faster, or smarter. And so we're going to see whether or not that zone defense comes down again. Gortor with the pull, touches down, rolls towards the far sideline. We do, in fact, see a zone again. Not able to secure that. Great work by Gortor. Huge amount of pressure. But Rosenthal has the disc. Looks to reset back to Ha. Isn't able to pull that one down. Gortor to Nida. Just slightly outside the hands of Yoshida. So it looks like Japan are instead going to be switching up, going to a match defense, slightly overthrown. Buxer is able to pull that one down. Buxer doing a huge amount of work for the Australian side on both offense and defense. Resets to Ha early. Marked by Yoshida, but it's not able to stop the forehand coming away. Rosenthal's not able to secure it. Japan with possession now. Abe, far sideline. We see Wongrachu back on the field, putting just enough pressure on to generate that turn. Back for Australia, putting the hand up, signaling that she's wide open. Are we going to see a deep cut from Wongrachu? You can tell that she wants it, but she's just waiting patiently. And a pick has been called. So as we work the just to the far sideline for Australia uh, on offense, a pick has been called. So someone's pursuit of their opposing player was interrupted by the movement um, of the other players. Oh, and a violation's been called. So um, the disc has to return to, uh, or, or players have to pick the correct positioning where they would have been had the pick not occurred before we we're able to resume. Great work by the Japanese defense. We put up a low release. Buxer again, able to pull that one down. Rosenthal wanting to get rid of that backhand. Not able to do it, goes for the reset. Not able to find Ha. Kawaguchi puts one up, just overthrown. So we are here, the score currently 5-2. A lot of pressure from both teams in terms of defense in this game to 15 between the under 20 women's side for Australia uh, Australia and Japan. Some great movement by the women there. Buxer again, great initiating cut to work downfield. Resets to Ha, puts a high forehand up. Pulled down beautifully by Eleanor Koning. Parked up in the midfield space as we see a little bit more width being used by the Australian side, working with three handlers in that upfield space. Trying to use as much width of the field as possible, but they're not able to get the reset cleanly. Abe in the red zone. Puts one wide across the field. Goto is not able to get a hand to it. A little bit underthrown. She had to turn back for it. Not able to secure that disc. So Australia with another opportunity here. Setting up on a side stack, trying to create as much opportunity for Buxer to get free. And it goes high. She pulls it down anyway. We saw Eleanor Koning streaking deep. But that throw doesn't come off. Back to Evelyn Ha. Pressure on the far sideline by Yoshida. And there is the block. Nira goes with a big run through D. Japan in great position to score and go 6-2. Threading one through. There it is. Some beautiful work by Japan as we go. We're going to see that again. There is the turn. Yoshida with a great backhand comes in a little bit low but Abe was able to pull that one down 
for a great score. A timeout's been called by the Australian side. And so, got a, a couple of minutes uh, just as as these teams sort of decompress, take a moment to to figure out what the next steps are as Japan go up by four. I could not be more excited to be here to feel the energy of these two teams as they battle back and forth in this slightly drizzly but otherwise wonderful conditions for playing Ultimate. Uh, my name, as always, is Blair Munro, proudly uh, uh, working here with Ulti TV and New Zealand Ultimate. Um, and I will be back with you shortly. live and we are back after the timeout uh, in the first game super exciting match that we're seeing here between the under 20 women's Australian side and the under 20 women's from Japan who have come to rainy not miserable but definitely drizzable Tamaki Makoto at Auckland Grammar where we have perfect conditions and we're gonna see Japan out on the pull after that great score on the previous point. Shimizu with the pull. And great aggression by Hata with a great run through D. Shimizu works the midfield, puts one a little bit high. It goes outside the hands of Ogura. That's Paige Mackay, big forehand, a little bit much edge on that on that throw. The uh, fades out towards the near sideline, so we're not able to uh, maintain position. But it is a great territorial opportunity for Australia here. The wind settling down a little bit as uh, Eilish Warnock uh, looks to put a mark on the disc. Very very aggressive defense here. Shimizu is able to reset to Hirase.
great touch. Great touch by Langston, but not able. It's just not enough. Shimizu again. Great defensive pressure by Saskia Blackburn, able to shut down a, a fantastic undercut. Japan instead forced to work the far sideline. Shimizu puts up a forehand. And a little bit too much edge is going to generate the turn. Australia with an opportunity. We see Warnock setting up in that handler space, hoping to initiate a strong offense for the Australian side. Supported in that space by Stephanie Childs. Again, utilizing a vertical stack. A little bit of miscommunication, trying to get that break a little bit early. Blackburn with the disc, works to Mackay. Back to Blackburn, unpressured on that sideline. There's Stephanie Charles with the disc. Making those fakes, trying to shift the defense. Works back, finds Mackay, center field. Back to the near sideline, kept in hands. Only just, Caitlin Lewis, some great toe work there. There's a huge amount of space in the end zone on that sideline. She's not going to work it. Puts one up high. Child not able to secure that one. Japan with an opportunity. Shimizu picks up, wants to put that big backhand up again. But a pick has been called. This is an absolutely great matchup here today. Both teams really giving everything they've got. Each of these points. Hirase goes big. Nice, beautiful bladey backhand, edging back in towards Shimizu on a great upline cut, but it is not enough. Eilish Warnock says no. Blackburn to Childs. Near sideline, Mackay. A little bit close, marked too tightly by Hirase, not able to get that disc away. Blackburn again, comes out of the hand, a little bit squiffy, that's a turn and an opportunity. Shimizu wants to put one up! And again, Warnock just shuts down that lane. Hirase, great agility, marked by Mackay, able to get a disc away anyway, finds Hata on the, near, on the far sideline. Shimizu with a lot of opportunity, a lot of space, puts a shot up, just outside. Finds Ogura very close to closing. There it is. Great work by Japan. Iguchi with the score. Great awareness there. Ogura with the disc and the patience on the end zone. Finds Iguchi wide open, unmarked. 7-2. Japan up by five. A game to 15. We will take a halftime break when the first team to score eight does so. The first half has been heavily in the favor of Japan, but it has been off a few small errors that they were able to capitalize on. There's a lot of focus on the Japanese side. They're playing incredibly well. It's absolutely great to see. But a timeout has been called.
Okay, and we are just about to break the timeout. Seven Japanese defensive players taking the line. Australia still in the huddle. A, a crucial point for Japan to take the first half, carry that momentum going forwards. We've seen that they are able to display amazing defensive pressure. Number 33 for the Japanese side, Yoshida Ikuho, who's done some fantastic work in terms of setting up their defense with strong pulls. In terms of working up and down the sideline with their players. The air is positively electric. Timeouts only ever really serve to cool us down in the commentary booth here and the spectators on the sideline. But it's crucial for those players to get their heads into the game, to stay focused. We're going to see what impact that timeout had. There it is. Starting off the pull, Shimizu again. And it just touches down. Just inside, carries out, but a great, great play there. And we're going to see that same zone defense again. Megan Lee pressured on the near sideline, calling for Bucks to come all the way through for a quick reset. Using tight movement, tight crashing of that zone to get off the sideline. Ha with the disc, puts one back over the top. Some amazing pressure. Subarashi Bogyo by Japan. Able to generate that turn. Shimizu with the disc. Hoping to close things out. Right on the doorstep. Puts one up over the head of Lee. But it looks like a pick was called. So Japan will retain position, but the disc will... I uh, know, the pick looks to have been retracted. Uh, just waiting for some communication. Again, as a self-officiated game, it's the player's responsibility to make calls and resolve them where they uh, feel it's necessary. There was a great overhead. Pick's been retracted. That is a score as Japan takes half. Shimizu with a great over-the-top high backhand. Fantastic work uh, by Japan as they take half. Uh, six points up over Australia. Still anybody's game. Still anybody's game. Australia with a great opportunity in the second half to really fire on that comeback. Uh, but we will take a short break uh, before we see whether or not they are able to do it. Uh, in the first game, still only the first game. We've seen such fantastic ultimate display. We're still only in the first game. I could not be more excited, more privileged to be here with you and talk you through what's happening on the field at Tamaki Makoto uh, at Auckland Grammar School. But for now, as always, my name is Blair Munro, and we'll be back shortly.
And we are back for the start of the second half of the first game in the under-20 Tri-Series Trans-Tasman. The sea is nothing but an obstacle as these three nations, Japan, Australia, New Zealand, come together. I say come together, New Zealand was already here. We come together to showcase for you some fantastic ultimate. And fantastic ultimate is exactly what we have seen thus far. Japan up by six, having taken half over the under-20 women's Australian side. Still anybody's game. The teams were getting revved up during that halftime. We'll see what happens. My name, as always, is Blair Munro. And if you like what you see, buy a virtual ticket to this event. Uh, watching these under-20 teams, it does take a bit of uh, a bit of effort behind the scenes we've got the wonderful t uh, crew from ulti tv um, as well as support from new zealand ultimate but we need your support please do buy a virtual ticket um, donations are appreciated and very very welcomed um, details for that will be in the link in the description of this video The Thunder just starting to crackle in. Literally the only thing that could possibly postpone a game of Ultimate. We will play in all weather except for Lightning. So we'll hope that it holds off just a little bit. Australia coming out of the half on defense. So a great opportunity here for Japan to really pressure that Australian defense. Put another point on the board. Hirase was working hard with Shimizu in the midfield. But a turn is generated by the Australian side. Mackay puts one over the top. Doan is not able to chase that one down. Shimizu working with Ogura. Ogura with the disc. Shimizu, unmarked by Charles, puts a big forehand up. A little bit blady. Snatched out of the air by Langston. An opportunity for Australia to go back the other way. Putting a high one up. Doan gets it this time. No hesitation. Just outside the hands of Charles. Shimizu is able to pick that one up. Hirase streaking deep for the end zone. Nasu with the disc. Finds Ogura right in the red zone. And there is a score. Japan 9-2 over Australia. The drizzle starting to get a little bit heavy. That water on the disc is going to affect how easily the teams are able to secure it. Throws that might be easy under, under other circumstances going to be a little bit more challenging which team is going to have the composure to really dominate this second half we've seen a great first point out of the half by japan fantastic work amazing intensity their energy levels are still so high really is fantastic to watch One of the standout uh, scorers for the Australian side. Buxton, number eight, jumping up and down to keep warm as the team take the line, the whole side for Australia, for the most part, just making sure everyone is dialed in. Everybody knows what is required of them. Again, we see the, ja the Japanese side taking the line early. Just a small cluster, the seven players on the line, and the coach just last-minute adjustments 
that they might want to make to their play. There's a very, very slight uh, wind coming from the left-hand side of your screen towards the right. Nothing too, uh, too gusty, nothing too strong at the moment. the games in our series to 100 minutes we've just hit the 65 minute mark 35 minutes left in the game or the first team to score 15 Australia giving the signal for readiness Goto Miho with the disc for Japan We see the signal, and here goes the pull. Nice and high, it's gonna touch down with a little bit of roll. The roll curves back the other way. Australia inside their own half. Rosenthal picks up the disc. Early reset to Evelyn Ha, who goes up to get that one. Great work. Puts a big forehand up over the top. Just outside the hands of the Returned and healthy, Neon Wongrichu. Such a great cut. Just by the skin of her fingertips, not able to pull that one down. Heavy pressure from the defense. So Asawayama finds Yoshida. Goes up over the top. Ha trying to bid again. And there it is. Rosenthal with a great run through block. You can see the smile on Goto's face. Just recognizing the intensity of that play. Ha with the disc. Quick signal. Sends Wangrachu out. Just not able to get the grip as we said. As that rain comes in. As the conditions get a little bit slipperier. The control is going to be what matters. So Ayama with the disc, marked by Wong Chu. Sags off, there's a little bit of space there. Big crossfield backhand. Goes past three potential receivers. A great opportunity for Australia here. We see Wentworth paying with the uh, hand up, trying to signal for some structure. Some great cuts in and out. Ha puts one, it's a little bit low. Georgia Suddy tries to chase it down, but it's not quite there. So Waiyama again, marked by Wong Chu, able to get the cross field. The pressure for a boxer is enough. Just there, Kawaguchi not able to pull that disc down. Ha in the red zone. Just a bit of miscommunication. Goes over the head of Rosenthal. We see Goto streaking deep. Looking to develop something in the downfield space. So Ayama, supported by Kawaguchi, works the far sideline instead. Abe, under pressure, back to Sawayama. Wongachu doesn't let anything go. Up that far sideline, Yoshida. The big hands of Sadi trying to shut down anything in the downfield space. Works back through, hits the midfield. Wongrachu shuts down the quick continuation. There it is, a big fake, opens up a little bit of space, but it's not utilized, the stall count's getting high. Yoshida again, puts up the big righty backhand. Rosenthal says no. There it is, great defense. This is what we're hoping to see in the second half. Australia really getting revved up. Ha tries to cut up line, pressured too tightly. Goes over the hands of Wentworth Pang. Japan with an opportunity, threads one through, there it is, Yoshida to Sawayama for the score, 10-2, great composure there, great vision, the turn was generated, players knew what they had to do, they moved quickly into position, great score, fantastic work by the Japanese side as they go up by eight over Australia. So far a very, very impressive performance by the Japanese team.
Once again, if you like what you see, give us your money. Uh, no, I, if you do like what you see, please consider supporting us, uh, the production crew here, Ulti TV at patreon.com slash Ulti TV. Uh, but to bring you events like this, something big and international that requires the input and buy-in from entire communities across multiple different countries, please support us uh, by buying a virtual ticket. The links for that are available in the description. the other side on the far side of the field we might be able to see the Australian men's uh, the opens team rather the under 20 opens team warming up getting ready to bring us the second game in our tri-series but as I hope yours is my focus is entirely on this field some fantastic ultimate on display Australia takes the line Japan prepares to come out on defense again not a lot of wind conditions are pretty good just a little bit of drizzle that rain is starting to have an impact we're seeing that some of the throws coming out a little bit uh, squiffy but beautiful pull a lot of float plenty of opportunity for Japan to get down great work by Shimizu but not fast enough to stop that first pass Warnock tries it tries to put a forehand in but I believe that Sugimoto got a hand on that one Kuni manages the reset. Great work across. Just outside of the hands. Kajino. Great cut, great position. Sugimoto puts the pressure on. I think there might have been a touch on that disc. Warnock's not able to get it, but there's enough length on that disc that it's still going to be hard work for Japan to go back upfield. Caitlin Lewis on defense. Putting a huge amount of pressure, trying to shut down Shimizu. Great support there as Sugimoto manages to secure that desk, but a pick has been called once again. It's been a pretty clean game, all things considered, but as we hit these later moments when the fatigue starts to set in, some of those lines aren't as clean, but it's good that these players are playing very spiritedly. They're making those calls early. They're signaling to everyone what should be happening. Shimizu fakes off the far side. And the near side has to work up. Sugimoto again. Shimizu. The pressure from Lewis goes up. Finds Sugimoto. Just outside the hands. A little, a little miscommunication there. That tempo just needs to be tightened up. Great work. Great vision. It's just those little execution errors. They're going to swing back the other way. But that's exactly what Japan, uh, J Japan needs. That pressure on this side now. Managing to generate that turn. Shimizu, Sugimoto, puts it through. Great work there. Nante Kanpe Kinasuro. What a perfect throw to put that 11th point on the board for Japan. Some great work. Amazing defensive pressure by Australia, but it's just not enough. The Japanese side are really dialed in. And come out on defense one more time. 
the window for Australia to come back on this one is closing slowly. They're still displaying a huge amount of energy. It could still be anybody's game. The favour, the momentum heavily on Japan's side at the moment. But there is always an opportunity. The gods and goddesses of ultimate are very fickle creatures indeed. The wind might gust up at any moment. A raindrop might hit the disc and tip it out of a player's hands. Anything could happen. The key thing is that we are here to see it all. We are here to watch the throws, the bids, the structure, the strategy, the communication, the spirit, the intensity, everything that these players have brought to the field today here in Drizrable Tamaki Makoto at Auckland Grammar for the first game of our Tri-Series. My name is Blair Monroe. It's been a pleasure to bring you this game so far. I cannot wait to see how it ends. And it is the opportunity of a lifetime for me to be able to talk you through the rest of the amazing games that we've got on the schedule. Uh, please do buy your virtual tickets. The link, as always, is in the description. pull the signal for readiness matched by the Australians Goto with a nice roll that's the kind of pull we like to see a lot of control on that disc it touches down outside Evelyn hard to pick up to initiate the offense and we see that same zone defense again looking to pressure the space rather than the players Australian players trying to crash all the way through Koning forced back out Megan Lee the opportunity for the reset forces the width of the field Great work by Australia there. Asprey works up the far sideline. But that zone is too much. Subarashi Bogio. And there we see it. Goto midfield. Marked by Lee. Puts the backhand up just outside the hands. Great work. Great chase down by Kajino, but it's not quite enough. We'll see that same zone set. Kobayashi. Marking up the disc. Crashing again. Buxer. Signal to go all the way around. Asprey is supporting. Great big cross fields. Ha gets right underneath it. Some great cutting. Great work using that space. Lee keeps that alive. Again, great work by Australia. Buxer through. Back to Lee. Nothing developing in the downfield space. But that is the trick with regards to a, a cup like this. Asprey trying to crash all the way through. Nice reset. Keeps the stall count low. Lee still there in support. Kobayashi pressuring the disc hugely. Kajino stopping any uplines. Great amount of pressure. A little bit low, but Ha's able to pick that one up. Buxa. Great cut. Great awareness. Huge space. The disc just touches out of those fingertips. Japan with an opportunity. That is the trick to playing against the zone. You want to work around it. When you've got that many players clustered around the disc, pressuring the defense, tiring them out is the greatest way to open up uh, space. Goto with the disc. Working hard with Ogura. Far sideline. Hata puts one up. Great score there. Egechi for the score as we go 12-2. Japan, 10 on the bounce. Some great work by Japan there. Absolutely fantastic intensity and effort. Great pressure on the defense, keeping Australia guessing. Switching up between a match defense that's working and a zone defense that's covering space. But the scoreline definitely does not reflect the intensity that both of these teams are bringing. We're seeing some amazing 
precise work by the Australian side. Lee working with Ha in that upfield space for those handlers, using the width, using that communication. Uh, Lee in particular doing a great job of guiding cutters in to crash through that cup, to move inside those defenders for a quick uh, pop pass and reset to keep that stall count low. Uh, when you've got a lot of pressure uh, being applied to you by a zone, like the one that we're seeing the Japanese side put down, it's a, a huge thing to be able to keep calm and to be able to still direct traffic in a way that's advantageous for your teammates. Um, a lot of players, particularly newer players and younger players, they'll tend to get a little bit trigger happy, they'll be pressured, they'll throw the biggest throw they can downfield and generate a turnover. But as we're seeing, Lee, Ha, Asprey, great players staying focused, staying calm, able to direct traffic to move the disc around the zone to utilize the width of the field as much as possible. Uh, great vision, uh, particularly from the downfield players as well who are doing a fantastic job of utilizing space, of, of finding those holes in the zone. It's just those little execution errors, maybe a little bit slow to adapt to the conditions uh, that's, that, that might be letting them down a little bit at the moment. Okay, Japan, Hirase with the disc, one of Japan's star midfielders who's made some great work in terms of initiation cuts, uh, supporting those handlers in that upfield space to get the disc moving for the Japanese side. To come out on defense now with a big pull, Australia have given the signal for readiness. Great backhand touches down in the Australian defensive half. It's exactly what uh, Japan want there. Great find there. Natasha Langson, far sideline. Not able to connect with Childs on the next pass. Hirase to initiate. We love these little number mirror matches as Warnock tries to mark that one off but lets the far side... Uh, Backhand go. Hirase again. And Australia able to generate a turn of their own. Tanaka on the mark. Makai to Childs. Not able to secure that one. Caitlin Lewis on a great undercut with an opportunity, but it doesn't come away. Hit us in Warnock again, facing off. Drives one all the way through. Finds Sugimoto. Tries to work the near sideline. Big width of the field there. Kobayashi doesn't get it. Neither does Tanaka. The opportunity goes back. Makai puts one up. Finds Charles this time. Some great work. Kuni on the mark. A beautiful forehand. An impressive bid by Warnock, but the wind catches it, pushes it just outside of bounds. Hirase puts a blade up. And it looks like it has been secured well by Kuni for the score. Great work, Japan, as they go 13-2. Two points away. Two points away from taking the game. A long road ahead of Australia if they want to stage the comeback of the day. Not impossible by any stretch, but the margins are closing. We're seeing those Australian players really jogging in. That intensity has not dropped at all. The energy they put in display is amazing and still is. Coaches take a knee, a little bit of last minute strategy. It's a bit of a nail biter. It's a very, very exciting game.
Still plenty of time for the comeback of the century. As the Australian Open side put on a show for the ladies on our main field today. Now, I believe our schedule is going to have a rematch between these two teams later on in the weekend, one that I absolutely cannot wait for. They say in a tournament the hardest team to beat is the one you've already beaten. We might see Australia either with a, a close comeback finish or Japan walking away with a victory here, and when they rematch, the energy is going to be completely different. I cannot wait to see it. But... The energy of that game is going to be determined by what happens here and what happens now. Shimizu with a great pull. Hard to initiate. Marked by Nasu. Rosenthal, near sideline. Trying to shift the defense. Has to work back. Finds Lee. Marked by Ogura. Wongrachu. Manages to pull that one down despite a great bid by Hata. Sadi with the disc signaling for a recent opportunity. Finds Lee in the upfield space. A great forehand there for Buxa. Unmarked. Where's the opportunity? Who's going to create that opening? Goes back to Lee. Cutter's happening. Going to the same place. A great attempt by Evelyn Ha. Huge layout, but it's not quite enough. Japan with an opportunity here. The call for no rounds being given. Australia do not want Japan in the midfield space. A big shift, enough to get Rosenthal to shift. And there it is. That's the pressure from Australia that they need. Putting another point on the board, potentially. We are in the red zone, maybe 15 meters away from their own end zone. We see Lee, the field general, looking to initiate. Supported. On the open side by Evelyn Ha. Buxer. He's going to make a great open cut. She's got the separation, but it doesn't come. Lee again, trying to create space. Puts one out a little bit wide. Wongrachu's not able to chase that one down. So Japan have another opportunity to work back upfield. Ogura. Kawaguchi puts one big cross field. Buxa pulls it down over the outstretched hands of Nita, but there was a call that was made. Looks like an injury. Manya Kodituaka has been doing amazing work in terms of covering defense and applying a lot of defensive pressure to the Japanese side, shutting down a lot of those open cuts. Uh, will be substituted by Wentworth Ping as we reinitiate play. Players just taking the appropriate positions, so. Uh, injury substitutions are one of the only um, ways to substitute a player during a point. So when you have particularly long points with a lot of turns, a lot of teams playing really strong defense, they can drag on and on and on, and there aren't the opportunity for rolling subs. So um, play, uh, moments like this where an injury is called is the only opportunity for players to substitute out, uh, which really does speak to the athleticism and the grit of these players for being able to work all the way up the field have a throw away, have a turn, play defense, pressure it, get the disc back, work back upfield. Uh, it really starts to add up. That fatigue starts to accumulate. And in these later moments of a game, it really comes down to 
who's got that mental focus, who's dialed in, who can push through that little bit of pain, that bit of fatigue, that tiredness. So just a little bit of signaling there as for what's going to happen with the disc. Okay, and the disc is live. Players are moving. Japan on offense. Works the far sideline. Finds Nasu. Pinned down by the aggressive Ha, but is able to find Shimizu. Works through. Just able to pull that one up. Hata keeps that off the ground. Works back to Shimizu. Lots of Short cuts, close passes. Great work there by Yamada. Back to Shimizu. Kawaguchi, midfield now. Big chase. Ogura with the disc. On the far sideline, marked by Lee. Nasu takes it down. There's pressure by Ha. Is it going to be enough? Shimizu able to get the quick around. Back to Ogura. And threads one all the way through. Hata in the red zone. Puts one up. Nasu. It's questionable, but nope. Teams have given it. Number 12 for Japan. Hata throws to number three, Nasu. 14-2. Some great work there. Really great defensive pressure from the Australian side. Evelyn Ha doing the absolute most. Rosenthal as well. Suddy. Huge amounts of intensity from these Australian ladies as they go to take the field again. Great work by Lee and Buxer. A couple of last minute words with their coach. <laughs> and me. Hi everybody, I'm Blair Munro. You might remember me from such other Ultimate streams as... Uh, <laughs> but it all comes down to this. <laughs> Japan, 14-2 up over Australia. One point left for them to score in this game as they come out on defense. Australia... Every single point is crucial if they want to stay in this game. So a timeout's been called. Australia just dialing in a couple of throws. But every single point is crucial for both of these teams from here on out. Every mistake that is made by the Japanese side, if they generate a turn, if they give the disc back, Australia are hungry. They need this. And we see them now just dialing in those throws that they know they need to connect. They've had a couple of uh, little miscommunications, a little bit of execution error. Tightening those up now during the timeout. It's a great moment to really get that focus in, to look the disc into the hands as they catch, to focus on the grip and adjusting it as they need to, to make sure those throws come out clean. This is the point where it's going to make the difference. Australia to come out on offense. Japan, one defensive break away from winning the first game in our tri-series. New Zealand, Australia, Japan, 2022 in Tamaki Makoto. These are the moments that ultimate players live for. When everything is on the line, 
Victory is the only option for both of these teams. It's the only focus. How can we string together passes? How can we make sure that it's our players who walk away with this point? The players who are able to stay tapped into that mindset, to stay focused, are going to be the ones who come out on top. Japan has had an amazing run so far. They've been dominant throughout the entire match, hugely focused, very clinical. They play a tight game of, of small ball ultimate. We see a lot of those reset cuts coming in quite close. But they're able to work them. They've got those quick hands, those quick releases on the throws. The discs are coming out and being secured on some very tight cuts. Australia playing a little bit wider, trying to play with a little bit more wiggle room, a little bit more margin of error. Um, but that margin of error is also creating opportunities for the Japanese defense to slip in and generate those turns. We've seen a couple of really good run through Ds from both sides this game. Yoshida with the disc for Japan to start what might be the last point for the game or what could be the first point of the rest of Australia's game. Great pull there. Esprit finds Rosenthal. Hoping to work off the sideline. There's a lot of pressure. Taking a time with the reset. Not engaging early. And a stall out's been called. Uncontested. Possession goes to Japan. And there it is, great pressure from the Australian defense, not willing to let it go just yet. Generating that turn, coming back the other way. The gentle strains of Leonard Skinner's Freebird playing in the background. Megan Lee. Fakes off the first undercut by Wonga Shu. Puts one up high. Brought down beautifully by Wentworth Peng. A backhand goes a little bit low outside the hands of Rosenthal. Sawayama finds Yoshida midfield. Goes back the other way. Rosenthal puts on too much pressure. The turn goes back to Australia. This is exactly what I was talking about. That intensity is here right now. Australia does not want to let this game end just now. Megan Lee, number 33 for the Australian side. Koning manages to get separation from Yoshida. Boxes underneath it. Doesn't manage to get the read as the disc fades toward the near sideline. Great positioning, not quite enough. Sawayama finds Miura. Works. Ooh. A great throw, hits a little bit beyond the hands, bounces off the chest. You could hear it from the commentary booth. Abe in great position, but another opportunity. Megan Lee at the halfway mark. Puts it up. Boxer comes down with it, uses the reach, manages to get a slip from Sawayama. Puts one across, finds Lee. Hoping something develops in the deep space. Bucks are on a great undercut. Puts a backhand up. There it is. Wong Ritchie wants it, but Sugana says no. Great run through by Sugane. 
Amazing defense. The long arms of Buxer on the mark, applying a lot of pressure. Sawayama trying to initiate something. Bucks is able to close that one off, and there it is. Australia in the red zone. Megan Lee calling for a stack, trying to create as much width as possible on the field. Supported on the break side by Asprey. Conan goes for it. Yoshida denies. Great defense. That pressure. So Ayama again, hoping to initiate the offense. Tries to use the width, works quickly, moves the disc. Tries to bounce one off Miura, but it doesn't come away. Australia with an opportunity now. One cut is all it's going to take. Who's going to do the work for Megan Lee? There it is. Buxer brings it down. Unsurprising, number eight for the Australian side. Buxer doing the absolute most in terms of getting that offense. Fantastic work there. Huge effort by the Japanese side to try and slow Australia down. On this point, it wasn't enough. This is what I was talking about. Choo-choo, that's the comeback train starting. Australia are fired up. We get to see them come out on defense now. Japan, one point away from victory, one offensive hold away from taking the first game of our 2022 Tri-Series in Tamaki Makoto. This is what we came here for, everybody. Now, the soft cap has been hit. We've hit our 100-minute mark which means that under ordinary circumstances, and, and in this case, the point was concluded. We add one to the highest score, and then both teams race to that number. With Japan already on 14, it's going to be a game to 15 anyway. The rain is starting to get a little bit heavier now. Is it going to be enough to cool the fire that we've seen on the Australian side so far? Or is it going to represent a tidal wave that allows Japan to get this offensive hold and walk away with a 15-3 victory over Australia? Only time will tell. Doan, Lewis, Mackay, Langston, Warnock. Some of the, the very dominant players that we've seen on this Australian side have been doing a huge amount of work in terms of generate, generating that defense. It all comes down to this. Hirase and Shibizu working together. Hirase on the up line. Shibizu with one of her own, puts a big crossfield shot up. There it is! Nira for the score. Nante Subarashi Shori Deshu. 15 to a 15 3 to Japan, the first game of our Tri Series. What a fantastic performance by both of these teams. The score line does not reflect the intensity, the level of ultimate that we saw. And it's only going to get better from here. If you like what you see, please check the link in our description. Give us your support. Buy a virtual ticket to this event. And other than that, please stay tuned as we bring you the very best in Trans-Tasman Ultimate between New Zealand, Australia, and Japan over the next two days. My name is Blair Munro. It is a privilege to be working with Ulti TV. And uh, we will be back with you shortly. TV.